Hello, and welcome to another episode of Coaster Kings A through Z. I'm Ian, and the letter of the week is Q for Chimera. At the advent of the theme park boom of the 1960s and 70s, two roller coaster manufacturers emerged as leaders in the Western world of steel coaster manufacturing the American Aero Development and German Schwarzkopf. While both manufacturers occasionally competed for the same contracts, they couldn't be more different in their approach. Aero's history can be traced back to the construction of Disneyland, and their rise was always tied to the construction of permanent theme parks. While Arrow did construct a series of flat rides and portable rides, their business was always more rooted in custom attractions, including elaborate flumes and car rides. Their first successful steel coaster model was the Mine Train, a model custom designed for each park. Schwarzkopf's roots lay in the traveling fair circuit of Europe. The firm got their start making flat rides, and they remained as an important part of Schwarzkopf's catalog throughout this company's life. Their first successful steel coaster model was the enormous, enormously popular Wildcat line, a series of compact steel coasters that were designed to be portable. Both manufacturers would see significant success in introducing looping coasters back to the industry. Arrow in 1975 with its eponymous corkscrew model, and Schwarzkopf in 1976 with its terrain-hugging masterpiece, Revolution. Unlike Aero, which continued to exclusively build stationary looping coaster models, Schwarzkopf quickly introduced a portable model of its looping coaster, the Looping Star, in 1978. Over the next few years, eight single-loop coast- single loop looping star coasters would be constructed, and Schwarzkopf continued to expand the product line with new layouts and additional loops. In 1984, showman Rudolf Barth purchased Schwarzkopf's largest portable coaster yet, the Dreyer Looping, or Triple Loop in German. The first in the world to include three vertical loops, this coaster was designed by legendary coaster designer Werner Stengel. Dreyer Looper Looping stands 107 feet or 32 meters tall, features a curving first drop of 100 feet or 30.75 meters, and a top speed of 54 miles per hour or 87 kilometers per hour. The layout's signature feature is its namesake, the set of three vertical loops, a one set of back-to-back -back loops after the ride's second twisting drop, and a smaller one placed between and in front and between them, which follows the third drop. Dryer looping was built with five trains, which each had six cars, although the number of trains and cars would change throughout its uh, lifespan. After 12 years on the fair circuit, dryer looping was purchased by Malaysia's Sunway Lagoon, where it opened as Triple Loop Coaster and operated from 1997 to 1999. The coaster would return to Europe in 2000, when it debuted as Magnum Force at England's Flamingoland. By the time the coaster had reached Flamingoland, its trains had been reduced from six cars to five cars each, probably in an effort to lower maintenance and parts costs, as Schwarzkopf was now defunct. Sometime during its years in Malaysia and England, pilot-style crossbody seatbelts were added to the coaster. This is likely due to the coaster's intense nature, and a desire to ensure riders were secured beyond the lap bar, especially as bodies were in, kind of going to be under such intense g-forces. After a five-year run at Flamingoland, dryer looping was sold to Mexico City's La Feria Chapultepec Magico, a historic amusement park originally opened by the Mexican government in 1964. Dryer Looping opened in 2007 as Montaña Infinitum. Eventually, the park renamed the coaster Montaña Triple Loop before settling on Chimera in 2017. Chimera is a Spanish spelling of Chimera, a fire-breathing female monster with a lion's head, a goat's body, and a serpent's tail that appears in Greek mythology. With parts and maintenance still at a premium, the park continued to reduce the number of running trains. At its opening in Mexico, Chimera had three five-car trains, but over time this was reduced to just one train operation. The park may have also discovered another way to cut maintenance costs. One train operation meant the coaster's brake zones were now redundant, and with this in mind, the park ceased operating Chimera with trim brakes, causing the ride to run faster than ever before. 
These operational changes, along with mounting park negligence, would result in tragedy. On Saturday, September 28, 2019, the wheel assembly of Car 5 came loose as the train navigated Chimera's third loop. This led to the train striking a support column and the eventual derailment of Car 5 from a height of 30 feet or 10 meters. The accident resulted in the death of two park guests and the injury of numerous more, and the Mexican government immediately shut down La Feria. The resulting investigation horrified the theme park and coaster community. It was revealed that La Feria was operating the coaster in a way which directly violated its operational manual. Maintenance of the train's wheel assemblies were shoddy at best, and the brakeless operation of the coaster had resulted in significant strain on the track. The future of this now historic coaster seemed pretty grim until late 2020, when people noticed it being carefully disassembled. On January 19th, 2021, Indiana Beach announced it had purchased Chimera, and we'd be refurbishing and relocating the coaster for the 2021 season. Although the opening date has been pushed back into the summer of 2022, the future is looking bright for this unique Schwarzkopf creation, which will now be called American Dryer Looping. Dryer Looping would prove to be one of Anton Schwarzkopf's last creation with his own firm. In 1985, a dryer-inspired triple-loop coaster was installed inside Canada's West Edmonton Mall, which would actually have a similar accident to the one that Chimera saw in 1986. And in 1986, the impressive four-loop thriller model debuted on the German fair circuit. Unfortunately, 1986 also saw the final bankruptcy of the Schwarzkopf company. Fortunately, Anton would continue to work on projects until his retirement in 1995, most notably in a series of beautiful coasters with manufacturer Zier, which include Gronelund's Jetline and Leesburg's Leesburgbahn. Anton Schwarzkopf and his firm's influence on coaster history cannot be overstated, and it is so exciting to see a piece of that history preserved for future generations. Thank you so much for listening. If you could, like, subscribe, and leave a, leave a rating wherever you're listening, that helps us out a lot. Make sure to visit thecoasterkings.com for trip reports, articles, and park updates. We also offer a full range of park and coaster-related merchandise. For Coaster Kings Radio, I'm Ian O'Donnell. Join us next time for another installment of Coaster Kings A through Z.